our second presentation is, <laughs> what is wrong with my dishwasher? Advanced analytics improved the diagnostic process for Mille technicians. Dr. Yishad Feldman from IBM. Good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Ishai Feldman. Um, I have a PhD from the Weizmann Institute, and uh, I moved to IBM about uh, 12 years ago after many years in academia. Uh, my research uh, has uh, always been driven by my desire to create um, intelligent tools, and uh, for most of my, of my career, I was creating tools for software engineering because then I was my own domain expert. What? Uh, and then uh, a few years ago, uh, I moved uh, to create tools for uh, systems engineering. Uh, and this has led me uh, to this work that I'm going to describe today. And uh, I thank the committee for giving me the opportunity to uh, uh, talk to you about this. So this is a joint work uh, between the IBM research team and uh, the Miele team, uh, led by uh, uh, Dr. Martin Kruger, who is uh, one of the authors uh, of this paper. So you may know Miele is uh, a manufacturer of high-end um, uh, white goods, uh, dishwashers, uh, washing machines, dryers, and so on, both for uh, home use and uh, commercial applications. Uh, Miele clients expect to keep their appliances for two to three decades, uh, and so they expect them uh, uh, to work uh, very well. They expect uh, prompt and efficient service when something goes wrong. And Miele is just justifiably proud of its, the quality of its products as well as uh, customer service, um, as can, you can see by the fact that it was in the, chosen by independent studies as Germany's best customer service uh, provider for the past uh, 25 years. So in this picture, you can see uh, a Miele technician connecting uh, his laptop to uh, uh, a dishwasher. Uh, and this allows uh, the technician to do a number of things. First of all, get information from the dishwasher, uh, internal information collected uh, in the processor, uh, as well as uh, do things like uh, reprogram uh, and, and, uh, and repair. So a few years ago, Miele approached uh, IBM Research uh, to see if we can help them improve their uh, customer service uh, process, uh, make it more efficient uh, using uh, artificial intelligence technology. Um, and uh, we created uh, an AI-based solution to help the technicians, first of all, diagnose uh, faults quickly and fix them effectively and efficiently. So uh, one of the things that I uh, like to do in my spare time is, uh, is read, uh, and one of the genres that I like is detective fiction, and I think there's uh, quite a bit of similarity between detective stories and, uh, and diagnosis, because um, uh, a detective tries to find uh, the culprit given a set of clues, which is quite similar to finding a, a fault given a set of symptoms. And there are different genres in, in detective fiction, so I took a few quotes. Um, does anyone recognize this one? So this is uh, from uh, Sherlock Holmes. This is actually the origin of the smoking gun uh, idiom. And of course, uh, with Sherlock Holmes, if you see somebody holding a smoking gun, it will turn out that he's not the, the real murderer. But um, you know, if you see a smoking uh, power supply, you know you need to replace it. So you don't need a computer to tell you what to do in that case. So here there's an, here's another uh, genre. Anybody recognize this one? Yes, exactly. So this is uh, Agatha Christie's uh, Miss Marple. And she solves uh, uh, these mysteries by always being reminded of, of something else that, uh, that she saw uh, in, in her village. Uh, and so this, is, uh, this corresponds to intelligent search. So um, uh, these, these days we have uh, various kinds of tools that uh, can ingest a lot of uh, uh, documents and then use various kinds of techniques to find the most uh, uh, similar documents to the problem that you have. So you can describe your symptoms, and ideally you will find uh, a short list of documents, one of which will tell you exactly what the problem is and, and what to do. Um, and this can work if somebody actually bothered to write down uh, the solution for this problem. But uh, if you think of the various kinds of symptoms that you can have, um, you can't really expect to have a document for every set of symptoms. Uh, for one thing, there are too many of them, and for another, it's not really interesting for somebody to sit down and write these. 
So this is useful, but only in a certain set of cases. Okay, um, anybody recognize this? This is a very famous uh, uh, short story. Edgar Allan Poe, The Golden Bug, where uh, they, they solve a cryptogram by analyzing the frequency of letters, or symbols, rather. Uh, and so this uh, corresponds to statistical methods. And uh, we put this together with something else. Uh, you, you would know, uh, David, what this is, right? Of course. So this is, again, Agatha Christie's uh, Poirot, uh, who always talks about uh, the little gray cells, right? So uh, logical reasoning. Uh, and this is what uh, we're doing. We're trying to put these two things together. Um, and I think this is one of the interesting things about this. So uh, we call this cognitive diagnosis, where we combine expert knowledge with machine learning techniques to create a statistical uh, diagnosis model. And uh, so has anybody here uh, read this book by Daniel Kahneman? Yeah, so if you haven't, uh, you really should. It's, it's a wonderful book, um, and which will teach you a lot about uh, biases in your own thinking. And um, he describes basically two uh, main cognitive strategies that people use. One is called fast thinking. Uh, and this is uh, intuitive. It's jumping to conclusions. It's uh, really thinking without thinking. You, you know the answer. It's, it's parallel. It's automatic. Um, it works very well, but it has a lot of biases, and this book uh, explains many of these biases. Um, and so you can't really live just using fast thinking. Sometimes you need to stop and, and really think. So this is slow thinking, which is deliberate. It takes a lot of time. It takes concentration. You can only do one thing at a time. But if done right, uh, it's much more uh, uh, accurate than, than this fast thinking. Um, but it's slow, so people can't do just one of these. You need to use both strategies and switch between them. And uh, I, I feel very strongly that um, artificial intelligence should also be, uh, be able to use both uh, strategies. So um, if you're uh, as old as I am, you may remember that uh, AI used to be all about knowledge, knowledge representation and reasoning, uh, the knowledge-based hypothesis and so on. Um, and then uh, more recently, it's all about deep learning and statistical methods and uh, knowledge has fallen by the wayside. Um, and I can't argue uh, with, with that because uh, they can do uh, amazing things with, with deep learning. Um, but I think they're sort of looking um, uh, under the lamp and uh, we really need to combine uh, both of these things. And specifically in, in our case, we're doing diagnosis. It turns out that um, uh, there are things that the experts know and find it very easy to express in a formal way that we can use. Um, for example, especially in the engineering domain. So if you think of the relationships between symptoms and problems um, in engineering, right? Uh, in medicine, it's, it's more difficult. But uh, with engineering, uh, the experts know how the machine works. They know the relationships and they can very easily tell us these. On the other hand, if you ask them what are the statistical relationships, not just between a single symptom and a single problem, which is easier, but really the difficulty is reasoning about joint probabilities, uh, this is really difficult. But in order to do that, we have a lot of historical data that we can use in order to learn these probabilities. So what we do here is really combine both expert knowledge with statistical methods to get the best of both. So. Um, what, what do technicians use? Uh, obviously, uh, they rely on their own training and experience, uh, which would vary between technicians. They also have uh, access to extensive uh, technical documents of uh, various kinds. And in a pinch, they can also call for assistance, uh, telephone assistance uh, from, from an expert. Uh, and they have uh, a lot of software systems to support the process, and uh, these systems record uh, uh, results of previous um, visits uh, for the same appliance. Uh, they record uh, parts replaced, they record lab analysis on expensive parts, so the lab can tell you after the fact whether the part should or should not have been replaced, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, but up to this work, they had um, really no support for the diagnosis process itself, and nothing that uh, helped them uh, relate a set of symptoms to uh, the possible causes. And of course, uh, not all technicians are equal. Uh, they, they can't be. So some uh, have had uh, 20 or, or more years of experience and uh, uh, can, can really diagnose things uh, quite quickly. Uh, although, of course, not in all cases. 
Um, and also, there's a, a large set of uh, different appliances. Not every technician can be an expert on, on all appliances. So uh, what we wanted to do is provide a system that will make all technicians perform at the level of the best technicians and also help these best technicians in difficult cases where the relationships between the symptoms and the problems are not, um, not obvious, and especially when there are multiple problems causing multiple symptoms, uh, which confuses the, the analysis. Another important goal was for the system to be able to learn from its own use. So um, uh, as I'll describe, there's um, a rather long process of creating, or, or there was a long process for creating the initial system for the technicians to use, um, which created a very accurate model. But uh, we're now investigating other ways of doing this. For example, create a model that is not as accurate by using uh, expert estimates without looking at historical data, and then have the system improve as it's being used. And as long as the system provides some value to the technicians in its initial form, uh, that's good enough. If they, if they use it, it's going to get better. And in fact, giving, you, giving value to the technicians um, is not just giving them uh, correct diagnosis. It can also be uh, giving them uh, using some rules or, or some other means to, to make them use the system in order to uh, get the data in. So this is the actual user interface uh, for uh, Miele. And uh, because uh, it's a German company, it's in German, but uh, I, will, I will translate. So first of all, the technician can enter a textual des description of the problem. Uh, in this uh, case, keine uh, Funktion wie Stromlos, which means doesn't work. And then we do the analysis and we translate this into a, one of our set of, or, or more, one or more of a set of symptoms that the model knows about. And then we provide the diagnosis. So in this case, we give 88% uh, probability for the electronics module. And the technician can replace the module and say, yes, indeed, this was uh, the problem. Uh, and then testing the, the appliance again and finding another problem. So now it's working, but it's providing a fault code F79. So again, we analyze the text to find the fault code from our list the, of, of known uh, fault codes in the model. And we redo the diagnosis. And now, as you can see, the electronics module is already known to be working because the technician just replaced it. But now there's a different problem, uh, circulation pump. Uh, the technician can replace that and tell us, yes, uh, this is a problem. And at the end, this is a, a crucial step. We ask the technician to tell us exactly what the problems were in this case. And the reason we do this is because now we have the whole information about this specific ticket in structured form. We know exactly the symptoms from our own list of symptoms known to the model, and we know exactly the problems that happened. And th in this way, we can use this information to improve the system. If uh, instead of this, if we didn't have this, or if we had a textual description of this, this would be much more difficult. Okay. So uh, to summarize, uh, the technician can enter uh, the symptoms in using free text. It doesn't need to because uh, there, there are these uh, drop downs uh, which can be used to enter the symptoms directly. But this is very convenient. The technicians really like that. Um, and then for every problem, the technicians can say, um, yes, this is a problem, or no, this is not the problem. And this is very important because we use this information in the model to change the, uh, the probabilities for the other problems. So this is called the explaining away effect. So if you know that something um, is, is a problem, uh, that explains some of the causes, and then that changes the probabilities for other problems, because you, you need to explain the other symptoms uh, more than the ones that are already uh, taken care of. So this is very important and, and very useful. So Miele did an analysis. Uh, we, we ran a, a study, actually Miele <laughs> ran the study with 40 technicians in Germany over nine months. Uh, there was a representative mix of technicians. Some had few years of experience, some were veterans. Uh, they used uh, the system in their daily work for all tickets related to, to the dishwashers. So what you see here is uh, a measure of if inefficiency. So uh, the lower bars mean better efficiency. Uh, the gray bars are the control group of technicians who did not use the system. Uh, the blue bars are the technicians that did use the system. And as, as you can see, Except for the last two months, 
uh, efficiency was uh, always better for technicians who were using the system. And uh, for, th for the totals, you can see that uh, there was about a third uh, improvement in efficiency for technicians using the system. But what about these two months? So uh, Mila did uh, a further analysis, and they found that uh, there were several cases in which the system said something like, um, the, replace the electronics module with 80% probability, and uh, the next one was circulation pump with 30% probability. The technicians replaced both, but the circulation pump was actually fine. So we asked the technicians, why did you do this? And they explained that if they just replace one component, then they have to close the appliance, run the test cycle, then it doesn't work, so they have to open it again and replace the other component uh, and do the whole thing again. So that takes about an hour. And one of the measures that they're uh, judged on is the repair time. So they thought, um, uh, why, why waste the time? Just replace both components. Um, so with further analysis, this is the, the, the pink bars. If technicians had followed the system's recommendations fully, uh, this is the efficiency that we would get. So if you don't see a, a pink bar, this means uh, it's, it's down to zero. Um, and these are the totals. And in this case, efficiency um, is improved by 80%. So we expect that as technicians use the system and learn to trust it, they will uh, uh, ex expend, spend the extra time and, and get uh, at least closer to this level of, of efficiency. So the, another uh, uh, important component is the first fix rate, which means the number or, or the percentage of times in which a technician came to the uh, customer site, did whatever uh, technician did, and um, fixed the appliance on the first visit. And this is very important. I'm sure everyone here has had the experience of a technician coming and saying, oh, now I understand the problem, but I don't have the part. I will come back next week. Wait for me between uh, 8 uh, a.m. and 1 p.m., right? Um, so we really want to avoid this. And uh, Mila had a very high uh, first fix rate uh, when we started this project. Um, this is really, for the industry, uh, above 90% is, is uh, very high. Um, but in fact, technicians using the system uh, improve this even slightly to 93.5%. We asked the technicians to fill out a questionnaire at the end of the diagnosis process uh, to tell us a number of things. So one is, um, uh, did they find uh, the system convenient to use? And, uh, and they did um, really uh, give, give us very high grades on that. We, we had a very good designer uh, for the user experience. Um, another is, was the system useful? And here we got lower grades because uh, the initial model that we created didn't support all possible symptoms and problems. And this was deliberate, right, because uh, it was just a pilot. So the technician asked us to add um, the missing things, and we were working on, on actually doing that. Another thing we did was compare the system's top recommendation to an evaluation uh, after the fact by, by experts. And this is not quite fair, because the experts had access to much more information that the system didn't have at the time. For example, lab reports about replaced parts uh, which can only uh, be available uh, after the part was, was actually replaced. Um, and uh, we also ignored uh, cases in which the system recommendation, the, the second system recommendation was the correct one, and uh, it was very close in, in probability to the first one, but uh, we said we weren't looking at the top one, and still we got 92% uh, um, agreement between the top uh, system and, and the experts. So how, how does this uh, work? First of all, uh, we need to, to see what are the possible sources of information that, uh, that technicians have. Uh, and um, of course, there are, there's a lot of uh, written information in terms of design uh, documents and technical manuals and so on. But unfortunately, these are written for people to read, not for machines. And it's very difficult to uh, analyze this in a, and get the, the actual semantics of, uh, of the text. This is a project that uh, we actually did uh, several years ago uh, related to system requirements, where we tried to formalize system requirements. And uh, we discovered that the state of the art is really insufficient to, to get this at the level of detail that we, we really need. There's also expert knowledge, as I said before, some of which is very easy for the experts to express, some of which is much more difficult. Uh, so uh, we made use of the things that are easy to do. And um, Mila had a lot of historical data about the previous tickets, which we used to populate the model uh, with uh, probabilities. But uh, some of this information is structured, 
for example, if the technician replaced the part, we know the part number, and we know whether this is a circulation pump or an electronics module or what have you. Uh, but uh, much of this is just text that the, the technicians wrote. So if the technician said uh, there's water under the machine or the dishes are wet at the end of the cycle, um, we need to analyze this text in order to uh, understand what the symptoms were because if we don't know the symptoms, we can't create the model. So there are two, two main challenges here. One is uh, to combine the information from the structured and unstructured sources and translate that into the model that, that we use for diagnosis and also uh, combine the knowledge with the uh, uncertain uh, reasoning. And uh, for the first uh, challenge, what we saw in the literature were basically two different uh, approaches. One was to say, um, we're only going to look at the text and going to do some intelligent search, right, like in the smart phone. Um, and uh, uh, the other one was, uh, we'll, we'll just look at the structured information and try to build a model from that. Sometimes this, this was aided by uh, manual curation of uh, unstructured data, but of course this doesn't really scale. So at, at the heart of the solution uh, is a Bayesian network, uh, and uh, I'm not going to go into uh, much, uh, much detail about this, but of course the, um, the major advantage of a Bayesian network is that it expresses independence relationships because um, if, if you want to reason about joint probabilities, which is exactly what we're trying to do, and you don't know this information, then you, uh, there's an exponential number of, of parameters to the model and there's no way you can have enough uh, historical information to learn all, all of these uh, uh, parameters. So you need a way of uh, reducing the number of the parameters uh, uh, greatly and uh, a Bayesian network encodes expert knowledge that allows us to do exactly that and there's another thing that we do which I'll, uh, I'll show in a moment. So um, this is the common model for diagnosis but um, experts really don't, I mean subject matter experts who know about the appliances and the engineering don't know about uh, Bayesian networks so we had to phrase this in a way that would be meaningful to, uh, uh, to, to the experts. And so what we did was uh, we started with a, what we call a semantic model, and I'll go into more detail in a minute. Uh, and this describes the symptoms and the problems and the relationships between them. And this is phrased in language that the experts uh, are familiar with, and they can express their knowledge using these terms. And from the semantic model, we uh, derive everything else. So. First of all, we use this to create the structure of the Bayesian network uh, without actually telling them that it is a Bayesian network. Um, we also use this semantic model to derive the analysis pipelines both for the structure information, which is relatively standard. This is what the IT people have been doing for decades, uh, but also for the unstructured information, which is much more difficult, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. And once we have this information, we combine it in order to populate the model with probabilities to get the final diagnosis model. So this part is the, uh, or, or rather this uh, node is, is where the expert expresses the knowledge and all the rest of it um, are the statistical methods that uh, uh, create finally the, uh, the diagnosis model. Uh, and the top level of the diagnosis uh, of the semantic model is uh, is fixed. Uh, so this is what it looks like. We have basically uh, symptoms and problems. These are the mo most important things here. Uh, we call a phenomenon a symptom or a problem. Uh, we have uh, fault codes, which are a subtype of symptom. And this is important because the way to identify fault codes in the text is different than the way of identifying other symptoms, um, basically using regular expressions. Um, and we also have influencing factors like um, uh, lifetime of the machine or uh, the country, hardness of the water, uh, and things like that. And we have a number of variations between these. So uh, a problem can manifest a symptom. A problem can cause another problem. And uh, an influencing factor uh, obviously uh, influences symptoms or, or problems. So uh, this is the way that we create the Bayesian network from the semantic model. The structure is, is uh, relatively straightforward, so uh, it basically corresponds to the semantic model. And it, it's very important that the relationships in the semantic model are causal relationships, because this allows, us, uh, uh, allows the Bayesian network to have the explaining away effect. 
Um, uh, and I'm not going to go into the mathematics of how uh, we represent the uh, conditional probability distributions, but uh, the important point here is that for manifests and causes relationships, we have a, a linear number of parameters. So even for these kinds of, of uh, nodes, we don't have a, a full conditional probability table. Instead, we have a linear number of parameters. Um, we do have an exponential number of uh, parameters for influencing factors, but uh, we expect these to be quite few, so this shouldn't really um, affect the model very much. For the unstructured analysis, uh, there are a number of difficulties. For example, uh, and th these are uh, not exact texts because uh, these are English, but these correspond to the German originals. So quite often the technicians would write, uh, machine check doesn't start. Okay, so we, we want to know that the machine doesn't start, but um, this, this, this word just comes in the middle and, and uh, really uh, wreaks havoc with uh, a lot of uh, NLP uh, analysis techniques. Uh, they can say large amounts of water near the drainage pipe, they can say wet floor under the dishwasher, these have no word in common, but they mean the same thing. Uh, and for uh, fault codes, uh, there are many ways of, uh, of writing these. And of course, technicians are not technical writers. Uh, this is not their main job, and they really don't take it seriously enough. Um, they make a lot of um, typos and uh, grammatical mistakes. Uh, they use jargon. They, they use um, uh, part numbers and so on. And so you can't take a standard NLP pipeline trained on Newswire and run it on this because it wouldn't find anything. So you really need to uh, specialize the, uh, uh, the analysis pipeline. And uh, one of the ways in which we did this was add to the semantic model uh, these relationships. So this uh, helps with the problem of uh, non-contiguous text, like machine checked doesn't start. So we define issues, which are things like doesn't start, blinks, uh, uh, dark, wet, and locations, which are the places in the machine where these apply. So it could be the whole machine or the dishes or the display or things like that. And then we have the relationship location of which relates to these things which do not have to be contiguous in the text. And one of the uh, tools that we used uh, is quite an, an advanced NLP uh, uh, tool which can find not just the dimensions but also the relationships between them. So uh, we needed to define dictionaries for the various types of uh, things in the model. Uh, rules like if we have some phrase that described the machine and phrase that described does not start, we can map this to machine doesn't start. Um, this is a little screenshot from this annotating tool. So you can take the text and say this, is, this part is this uh, uh, issue, this is this location, and there is this relationship, and then you create a machine learning model that um, uh, can find these in the text, and we also use some heuristics to extend this. Um, okay, so um, I'm not going to go into detail for lack of time, but um, uh, as I said, we use the information uh, collected by the system, which is now completely structured, to improve performance, and this helped the system um, get the right diagnosis in cases where uh, previously uh, it failed. Uh, and we're now working with Miele to strengthen this uh, solution uh, so it can use, be used by more technicians on more appliances. Um, the, we are also working to extend the pilot in various ways. So the, this is more of a research project, like uh, helping them with the visit preparation process, which happens before they come to the customer. Um, also helping the call center agent to help customers uh, solve problems when, when that is possible uh, over the phone. And we're creating uh, user interfaces to allow subject matter experts to create these models by themselves, including uh, also giving estimates for probabilities in case we want to um, move very quickly to a running system which will improve by, by uh, usage without the help of uh, data scientists. So um, uh, we created this uh, diagnostic uh, model. We got uh, really uh, excellent uh, results uh, from the uh, Miele pilot. Uh, we actually also, uh, after this work, we created a proof of concept with uh, Coca-Cola, which was presented at IBM's big uh, think conference uh, earlier this year, uh, uh, which uh, I guess I don't have time to, to show you, but I can show you then uh, later uh, offline. Um, and this one includes other features uh, like visual recognition and uh, uh, augmented reality for repair. So it's, it's a very nice uh, demo. Uh, and um, 
So the contributions of this work are this methodology that allows us to start with a semantic model and derive uh, the, the Bayesian network and the analysis pipelines uh, from this uh, uh, semantic model. Uh, to combine expert knowledge with statistical analysis of historical data, making uh, the best use of, of both. And something that uh, is in the paper but I didn't have time to describe is a new optimization model, uh, optimization-based algorithm for learning noisy or distributions, which allows us to use partial data. So uh, if we only have um, some, some cases in which we don't know some of the symptoms or, or the problems, we can still use these for diagnosis. Okay, so I'll, I'll have to show you the demo uh, offline. Thank you.